I want to wish you a very happy and Merry Christmas this Christmas Day. Wherever you're watching, I reckon probably 94.37% of you are in your pyjamas as you watch us together. If this is your first or your umpteenth time, you're really welcome to be here with us. Um, Linda Bingham, thank you for the biscuits that you gave to the sound team. Mark Bacon has not eaten them all. We've got people out in the cheap seats, so we can hear from them. Are you out there? There we are. Ethan Allen, they're bringing the age gap down by about 140 years. Thank you, Ethan. And we've got the really, really cheap seats as well here. There's my family who've come down as a surprise to me. Do you want to wave, guys? There we are. Well done. Welcome to you all and to you at home. We're really pleased that you are with us. If, we, as we're going through the service, you sense that God is speaking to you, then please text me. The number will come up through the service and I'm more than happy to hear from you. 07543 196 263. Maybe God speaks to you through a Bible verse or a thought in your head. Please text it in and we try and weave that into our service together. Um, many people are involved in this service and all of it was done at socially safe distances and filmed before we entered tier four. So please don't worry about any of those potential complications. I'd love you to text me today to tell me which is the main central part of your Christmas meal today. Is it turkey, chicken, beef, lamb, duck or nut roast? So please do text me in if it's turkey a T, chicken a C, beef a B, lamb an L, D a duck, and nut roast an N. So please text me and we see what we are eating as a church family together. Which one will bring you great joy? Joy to the world. That's our first carol. Thank you for performing that carol so brilliantly. We're going to light our advent candle now. Graham and Margaret Mungeam are going to do that with a combined age of 223 years between them. We are thinking about Christ today, the central candle, the centre of Christmas Day. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus, and rejoice in his coming to us, we light the Christ candle. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is our hope. 
He is our peace. Jesus Christ is our joy. He is love, pure, holy, undying love. Whoever believes in him will never perish, but have eternal life. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Now a prayer for today. We ask you, Lord, for your peace, for your presence and your protection, for all those who we love, for those we're concerned about, and for ourselves. And we come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Graham and Margaret, Margaret, sincere thanks for lighting those candles for us and leading us in prayer. Our theme through this Christmas period has been board games, not B-O-A-R-D, but B-O-R-E-D. Are we bored of playing games at Christmas? Do we wish we could be our true natural selves? I wonder what our board game is today. Let's look as Jess and Josie Hazelden open it for us. They love Yahtzee. We're going to see how that game plays out for them later on in the service. Now we've got our next carol, Come and Join the Celebration. This is an adult piece challenging the children's piece that we saw yesterday. 73 singers, 12 techies and musicians and um, Jules, who prepared all this, travelled 117 miles to record it. I think she got lost on a few turnings, that's my opinion. So let's listen and maybe sing along if you want to. Come and join the celebration. you go there I mean James Cathcart is a pantomime in one human body isn't he really at the end absolutely fantastic so many brilliant performances there thank you so much to all of you we are now going to keep with the children and we are going to watch together I encourage you to sing if you want to or just to listen to their pure I use that word carefully their pure voices as we have away in a manger 18 singers musicians and techies 12 take it away guys
Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for that. We understand that um, quite a few of you can't watch us live this morning. We apologise so much for that. Apparently, so many people are trying to refresh to get in and they can't. Please do watch us on Catch Up later on sometime today. I know how special it is to meet together at 10 and I really am sorry that you haven't been able to do that today. But whatever time you watch, it's still the day of Jesus' birth that we're celebrating together. One young lady in our church borrowed, stole, I guess it depends on your view of it, her mum's phone and she recorded secretly something that her parents didn't find for quite a while. But we see now Isabel Isles and what she actually said as she prayed when she borrowed the phone. She's going to lead us in prayer now. Today's worship, we're going to start with a prayer. Dear God, Thank you for all the clean water and all the food. Thank you for homes that we can live in and spaces that we can dance and play. Thank you for the clothes that we wear and the animals that we keep. Amen. Thank you for clothes that we wear and animals that we keep. Isabel there leads us in prayers for some of the basic things in life. Things that, I don't know, but if you're like me, we can end up taking for granted. There's been so much, i found, that I took for granted pre-lockdown that now I miss um, or I treasure them because I still have them. Let's continue to pray off the back of Isabel's prayer, shall we? Father God, we thank you for all the things that we treasure. And in a moment of quiet, why don't you just thank God yourself? And we ask you to give us strength for those things that we miss, that we took for granted. And we ask you to be especially close to those who are having Christmas Day on their own because of this pandemic. May they know your love for and with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yahtzee. Here's a classic commercial from 30 years ago. They're rolling out the good times in Houston In New York town and South Bend Roll out the good times with Yahtzee, with Yahtzee the good times never end. If you've never played Yahtzee before, it's a game where you have five dice, or if you want to use the plural, dices, and you roll those and then you can get different concoctions of numbers. My wife and I play Yahtzee every Friday lunchtime when I have a day off. You can see how beaten and weathered our boxes. We keep a score and at the moment um, I've got 28 points and Jo has got 33 points. So she's clear at the moment and winning. But um, I'm very humble when I win, as you can imagine, especially when I get Yahtzee. There's all kind of number combinations. Um, You can, for example, you can get a high or a low straight. So that's four numbers in a row or five numbers in a row. I wonder if the journey for Mary and Joseph felt like a high or a low straight. I imagine that long journey over miles and miles and miles that would have taken days would have felt high at some points when they felt really close to one another. They felt their love for one another and God's presence within them. When the baby kicked and Mary would say, Joseph, feel, feel my tummy. And there would have been low moments on that journey as well, low straights, when it was dark at night and cold. When they got to Bethlehem and they couldn't find anywhere to stay, that would have been a low straight, wouldn't it? A long journey for Mary and Joseph. Uh, And then, oh, there we are, full house. Full house is three of one and two of another. 
nowhere to stay. Can you imagine getting to Bethlehem and you're heavily pregnant and your ankles are swollen like palm trees and you just want to rest? You've been on a donkey for hours and hours and hours. And Joseph is probably tired as well, but if he's a wise husband, he would have kept his mouth shut. Um, we do that, don't we? I remember when Joe and I went in, when she was going into labour pains for Megan, our first daughter, and we walked into Tummage Wells Hospital. Um, no, not Tummage Wells, another Farnborough Hospital. And Joe squeezed my hand, which had my wedding ring on. And I thought, ah, oh, you're really hurting my knuckles here. But I was wise and decided to not say anything. I felt Joe's pain was probably almost equal to the pain that I was going through at that time. Oh, stop laughing out there at me, all you old women. So, oh, you don't know what birth is like. I know I don't, I never will, but anyway. So let's roll again. Oh, what have we got there? Oh, three twos, three twos. I couldn't find three twos, I could only find three fives, but I wanted three twos because of the moose. That's right, all the cattle that were in around the manger. Can you imagine that? We prepare our baby's room, don't we? It's one of those pressure points for people that they, we need to get the room done. We need to get the creche done. I mean, the baby could come any time. We need to get... Have you got the creche done? No, we haven't got the creche done. Oh, dear, they haven't got the creche done. No, well, we don't know. We're going to get the creche done. And there's such a pressure. No creche for Jesus. A stable. Probably a cave by the side of the road where they kept the animals with an old wooden gate across its straw. No, not that fresh smelling straw that's always there in the pet shops because they clean the animals every day. This was a stable, a working stable with stinky cattle, three twos moos, all of them in there together. What was it like, do you think, to give birth with animals in there? I mean, it's a bit weird, isn't it, with a midwife, although you need them there because they help you. Imagine if you were at Tunbridge Wells Hospital and all of a sudden some sheep and cows just came in to where you were sat in the birthing pool giving birth. It would be absolutely awful and unhygienic. Let's roll these dice again. Oh, four of a kind there. Um, the shepherds and the sheep, they all look the same, don't they? Shepherds were the dodgy guys in Jesus' day. In fact, the sheep all looked the same, that they would steal sheep from one another. That's why they put the markings on them. Because if you didn't put the markings on your sheep, then another shepherd would come quite possibly and steal them and put them with his sheep. No, I don't know what you're going on about, mate. These are my sheep. You can tell it. All mine have got three legs. Uh, so they are the first ones that the angels come to when Jesus is born. I do find it so interesting that Jesus isn't announced firstly to Baptist ministers or the Archbishop of Canterbury or Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King. You pick whoever it is that you think is spiritual. It comes to the ordinary people like you and me because let's not kid ourselves, we're ordinary, aren't we? We're, we're, we're normal people. We're, we're brilliantly and beautifully made by God. God looks at us and says, wow. But, but we know that we're one of seven billion. And Jesus' birth was announced to people like us. Oh, well that's nothing. That's just, I've got nothing there, so that's chance. Chance is when you can't put any of the numbers together and so you just add up the numbers and that's all you've got. And some people will look at this Christmas story and they think, well, it's still by chance, isn't it? It's not, not a real story. It's not really the Son of God that came down here. It's just all random so that we can have an extra special roast dinner. Maybe you're watching today and that's where you sit. You don't think this is real. It's just all by chance. Everything in life is by chance. I don't know about you, when I watch those nature programmes with people like David Attenborough, they don't make me think it's all by chance. The complexity, the intricacy, makes me think there's got to be something, someone behind this. And I personally believe that that is God who sent his son, Jesus. stuff there. Yahtzee, that's when you get all five numbers the same. It wasn't chance. God 
planned it. God put all the numbers in a row. A teenage girl called Mary, a righteous, good husband called Joseph, who was a carpenter, a stable in Bethlehem. God didn't micromanage all of those things. He allows us to take our own responsibility for things. But God had planned it that his son would come. And all the numbers are the same. Because God loves us all the same. There is no one watching today, no one in this world, that God says, oh, I don't quite love them as much as all the others. God loves us absolutely the same. This is a perspective that we need this Christmas. God loves you as much as he loves me. Not less, not more, but the same. Let's see a kid's perspective of this Christmas story together. There was this girl named Mary. She loved God and she loved to clean stuff up. But one day, an angel appeared. Mary was so surprised and kind of scared. But the angel said, don't be scared, you're going to have a baby. And then Mary said, how can I have a baby? I'm not married. But the angel said, it's all right. The baby will be God's son, Jesus. Mary was supposed to marry a guy named Joseph. She said to him, look, I'm going to have a baby. Joseph was pretty surprised, too, because he didn't know how to be a dad. But he wanted to take good care of the mom and the baby. Right before the baby was going to be born, Joseph and Mary had to go on a long trip to a town called Bethlehem. But it was okay, because Joseph made sure that Mary didn't have to walk by herself. But when they got to Bethlehem, it was so full of people. Nobody had roof on them. They tried one place. We didn't get other place. At the last place, the guy started to say no. Then he said, wait, I've got a place for you out back. But you gotta be okay with animals. There weren't even any beds. But it was nice and warm. When Mary had Jesus, they wrapped him in cloth and put him in the animal food dish. No one else knew about Jesus yet. But there were some shepherds just outside of town. And some angels showed up. The shepherds were like, oh no, what's happening? But the angel said, don't be scared. I have something really, really awesome to tell you. God's son Jesus has been born. He's in Bethlehem. He's all wrapped up in a blanket. The shepherds were super excited. So they got everyone together and ran to find Jesus. They were really glad when they found the right place. They were like, is this where Jesus is? And Mary let them come in. Mm -hmm. They even got to hold and cuddle the baby. Sometime later, some kings were living far away from baby Jesus. But God sent them a special star. The kings followed the special star a long way. A really long way. A really, really long way. The star showed the kings Right where Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus were. They even brought special presents for baby Jesus. Then everybody had a big party. Because they were so glad that God sent baby Jesus. That night was the best night ever. It was the best night ever. It was the best night ever. It was the best night ever.
absolutely fantastic. The children there said, God sent baby Jesus and it was the best night ever. My youngest is Amos and when I was writing this talk the day of that, he um, fainted at home and smashed his head on the hard kitchen floor and had to go to A&E with his mum. He was such a brave boy. All the time he was there and I was working, I was just thinking, as they said in the Jesus story, I just want to hold and cuddle the baby. I just wanted to try and keep him safe. But I had to trust him to the doctors and the nurses. God entrusted his son Jesus to us. And the question for us is, will we look after him? Will we hold him safe because if we do if we say Jesus I want you to be the center of my life I want to be a follower of you a Christian God in heaven sings and the angels look at him God says Yahtzee as it were this is absolutely brilliant the best it can be and so my question for you and me is this have we asked Jesus to be at the center of our lives because that will result in a Yahtzee in heaven let's see how Jess and Josie did with their game of Yahtzee. You can see them here rolling the dice with their perfect smiles. Two fours. I've got three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah. So if you get a two, that would be a long one. No. But you've still got a small one. Look at Josie encouraging Jess there. Well done. You didn't get the best, but I might do even better. Five, three fives. Yeah. Four, so three. Five. I could, but I don't know if I want to. Okay. I'm going well, to try for three five. Yeah, that's true. <gasps> oh, I got a Yassi. She got Yassi. That's so cool. On my first go. <laughs> that's amazing. Look how gracious her sister is there with her Yahtzee. Well done. Can I encourage you this Christmas lunchtime, take a a die and roll it, each of you. And whatever number it lands on, five, in this Christmas period, think I'm going to phone or write to five people, that's the number I got, just to show them that I care for them and I'm thinking of them. You might get a one, so just one person. See how many you get and then take up that challenge. We're going to sing together now, O Come, All Ye Faithful. This is a carol that we might struggle to sing because we don't feel faithful, but God is still faithful to us.